What's up, guys? You are going to love today's interview. It is with Anna Kramling. She is a chess master, a massive chess creator and streamer out there. I encourage you guys to check out our content. I promise you're going to really love this one. She's high energy, super helpful, even with impatient, I would say, even with yours truly. Uh, so check out her stuff. Both of her parents are grandmasters. She was raised as kind of a little chess prodigy, right? From the age of six, she was competing in tournaments. We'll talk to her in the first half of this video. Video. We'll talk to her about all her chess tips, kind of her backstory, how chess has taught her other lessons in life, right? And then on the back half of the video, she's going to coach me through uh, a specific strategy that I'll wait and tease you guys with now uh, through a real chess match, and she'll kind of coach me as I go. So enjoy, guys. All right, guys, so I am joined here with Anna Kramling. Anna, welcome to the channel. I'm happy to have you. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. Me too. I am thrilled. I feel so fortunate. Just like starting out with a little bit of gratitude. The fact that I started covering, covering mobile games 10 years ago on YouTube, and now I get to talk to a chess prodigy. I'm sure you're not comfortable with that, but I am. Uh, you know, you both of your parents were grandmasters. You are one of the larger creators. We're going to be doing an event together, a chess event where you are my coach. So I figured, you know what? This is going to be the perfect thing is have you come on the channel first and ask you some questions, get to know you a little bit, get to know, I want to know like some basic uh, chess strategy and stuff like that, which by the way, I'll link a bunch of, of Anna's content guys. She has so much. I've been binging your videos, Anna, because I just don't want to look like a super idiot, you know, on this stream, you know? <laughs> Thank you. Thank <laughs> no you. Problem. I appreciate it. <laughs> so as I mentioned, you've been, I think I have this right. When you were six years old, you started playing chess competitively both of your parents are grandmasters as i mentioned are you a master is that your technical ranking or am i wrong there i'm, I'm a I woman feet a master which is one of the masters that you can be it's one of the titles yeah i love it and i'm so i've always wanted to talk to like a chess expert or something so <laughs> let me just start with the beginning you start when you were six years old how has chess shaped your life? Both of your parents, grandmasters, that's that's insane. Has you, have you just been eat uh, and breathed chess since you were a little girl? I have. <laughs> I mean, it's a very kind of strange story in a way to be raised up by uh, two chess grandmasters. There's not a lot of families that have it that way. But it's been super fun. Um, but it's been a lot of chess. Like, I remember being seven, eight years old and my parents talking about what chess opening they should have played in one of the games uh, for dinner instead of talking <laughs> about like other things. So it's been a lot of chess, but I've also been very fortunate to be able to share a passion with my parents. And uh, it's been really fun to be able to travel around the world and play chess with them. So it's been a lot of chess, but it's been really fun. That is so cool. So, you know, as somebody who started like as I'm thinking of like a young, you know, Mozart or something like that, right? Uh, like as a child starting to really, you know, hone your craft, do you subscribe to like the 10,000 hour rule or anything along those lines where you just put in enough time to anything and you can become really good at it? I think so. I really think that training is just so important. And uh, there's a lot of people that think that to become a chess master or to become really good at chess, you just need to be born in a certain way and you need to be in smart enough or whatever. But I really think that anyone that puts in enough practice and truly puts in enough practice can become really good at chess. So I do think that that's one of the most important things. And back in the day when I used to compete a lot, um, I did I did really try to, to get those 10,000 hours and to try to become as good as possible. That's really cool. I want to kind of cut a little bit forward to one of my, my uh, further questions. And by the way, guys, Anna's going to coach me. Uh, shield your eyes, guys. It might be very, very bad. Towards the end, you're going to coach me on a match or two as well. Uh, but I want to ask, in terms of your trajectory as a player, since you've been playing so the majority of your life, and it's been a, such a big part of your life, is was there a moment where things just like kind of started to click for you, you know, playing chess? Or that you felt like, okay, I'm seeing the board differently now. I'm seeing the game differently. Was there a moment where you just could feel that you were a better player? I think with time that was just so tournament based sometimes there'd be a tournament where i'd just be like what is happening like everything makes sense everything is fits right like yeah. and you just feel so somehow like empowered because you just know that things are going so great um but then other times it could be the opposite where everything just kind of felt like it was about to get into place but it wasn't really uh working so i think it was really just tournament based but the more i practiced and the further i went to my career the more times i felt like everything was going great and everything was into place 
That's so cool. Uh, do you get nervous before a big match? If so, how do you calm oh, yes. down? How do you calm? Oh, how, yes. <laughs> how do you calm yourself down, or do you not? You just you just go. <laughs> There's a lot of different ways and actually a lot of players do this, but what I would do is that I would watch like an episode of a funny show before. I begin That's good. That's tournament. actually really good. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a favorite um, or listen funny to music. show? Do you have a favorite funny I, show? I used to watch Rick and Morty sometimes. There you go. Good choice. Good choice. <laughs> Yeah. That, that's good. So it kind of calms you down a little bit. How about when you're in that high pressure situation and you just bomb, you fail, you you lose, you know, and it may be even an ugly loss. Right. And you're just like embarrassed or whatever. How do you get over those losses and how do you have the strength to continue to, you know, to, to get back to that next tournament and not lose your confidence? It's really hard. Chess can really hurt when you lose, especially because you spent maybe five, six hours on one chess game. And it might be just one little mistake that you did yeah. in a certain situation that just destroys those five, six hours of progress that you did during that game. So it, it's really brutal, especially in classical chess. And it's really hard. But I think what I really try to do is just realize that that was one game. And in my life, I'm going to play so many more games. And so I'll just once again do something that will make me a little bit happy, learn from my mistakes, and then try to move on. Um, but it's hard. It's really hard. No, I like that. Very honest answer, too. It's like it's it does suck. It does hurt, you know, uh, but I love that you kind of get back up there. And, and that's the only way that we can improve and kind of learn, obviously. Was there kind of circling back to my last question? What was the most nervous you've ever been for a match to you? Is there one match that stands out that you're like, oh, God, this is big? Yeah, I think um, three years ago, I participated in the European Youth Chess Championship okay. and I was doing really well. I, I wasn't thinking about it in the beginning because there was there were no expectations on me. But I started the tournament with four and a half out of five points, and I was at that point second, um, which was really big. And I remember my coach saying, "Okay, Anna, now we focus <laughs> because there are only four games left, and yeah. me getting a medal in the European Championship would be huge." Um, and I remember then. I just got so nervous. I went to the board and I was like, wait a second, I could actually win this thing. Like I could actually get a medal. Like, it, yeah. And then uh, I think I kind of crumble when I have that pressure on me. I do so much better when I just stay focused and just try to have fun and, and do my best. Um, but I remember that one game, me just being so nervous going up and just thinking what would happen if I won now and I actually got a medal here. Did you, did you get a medal or no? I did not. I did a really good tournament, though. It was the best tournament of my life. But I was going to say, I, top four is pretty dang good. Yeah. It was really good. But I ended up losing three games in a row, and then I won the last one. So I, I gained, like, 150 points of rating. Like, it was insane. But wow. um, if I just would have gone half a point more, I would have gone in top three. Do you aspire, so do you aspire to be a grandmaster someday? That would be an absolute dream come true. And... Obviously, I would love it. The only thing is that it takes so much work and dedication to become a grandmaster. And I have later uh, or in recent years put a lot more worth, uh, work into creating content and making videos and try to spread chess as much as possible. So at some point in my life, I think that I kind of want to find a mix of me really trying to improve at the same time as I'm able to uh, make videos and make content. And, and like I said, try to get as many people as possible to play chess. So hopefully one day, but... It's going to require some work. Absolutely. Good luck. Uh, I think you have the pedigree and the, the work ethic. So I, I have faith in you, Anna. But uh, do you have like a dream match? Or somebody that you'd like to match somebody against someday? Honestly, my dream match was to play against Magnus Carlsen. And I did that. Um, that was my next question. <laughs> How did it go? Were you nervous there? No, no. I, I Well... Not really because of the match, but I knew that this was like probably going to be one of the few games that I ever play against him. And so obviously knowing that this was being recorded, I wanted the game to be as good as possible. It'd be yeah. so sad if I just lost in like 15 moves. So I was a little bit nervous, but the game went better than I thought it was going to go. So it was good. Did you kind of have the mentality of like the worst to your point is like, I just want to stay in this for a while, you know, and just, you know, soak up the moment a little bit. And it was in person, right? It was, and it was so random. Um, I was in Madrid for for an event, for, well, a huge chess tournament, but I was in Madrid, and then I went to a park one day, and uh, all of a sudden, there were a bunch of chess people there, and someone told me Magnus Carlsen is coming in 15 minutes. And I thought, I didn't even know that Magnus was in the country. You know, he's from Norway. I was wow. like, what is he doing yeah. in Spain? Right? 
<laughs> and then he came with Judith Pulger as well, who's uh, the best female chess player of all time. So that was a crazy day. Wow. Did you get to play against her as well? No, I did not. But I get to film when she played against Magnus and when she beat him in 18 moves. And I was really happy Dude. of having that on film. That was really fun. <laughs> that is so cool. So are you thinking when you're doing a video, when you're doing a match like that, are you thinking at all about the content about like, OK, you know, this is going to be a killer video, you know, and stuff like that? Or are you just focus on the match? Basically, as a content creator, you do think about those things. Yeah. But I think when I was there, everything that mattered was that game. I was just trying to play as well as possible. And I just knew that for me, I just really wanted to play the best that I could. Um, and that's what I was focused on. So I wasn't really thinking too much about how the video was going to turn out. Okay, makes sense. I, my final question about you and your preparation, I think, maybe, maybe I'll lie, uh, is... When you're preparing for a massive, a big match, maybe against Magnus Carlsen or maybe just in a tournament or something like that, and you have the time, obviously, between your matches to strategize and study and whatnot, are you focused, like, what percentage of your attention is focused on the opponent specifically? Uh, or just, you know, if not that, then what else are you studying between matches? I think it's, like, 80 90% focused on the opponent. Um, what you want to do is that you want to try to study as much chess as possible outside of tournaments. And then in tournaments, you just want to be super focused on openings and on uh, being able to figure out what your opponent plays and try to counter that. So it's mostly just openings and mostly just seeing what my opponents play and how I should react to it. This might be a dumb question, but how much of your attention and focus is on what your opponent's doing versus what you're going to do next? I know they're they're tied together, obviously, but you know... Uh, and maybe how does that correlate to a new player? Because I noticed that I'm focusing on myself probably way too much, right? Like 90% of the time, you know? You need to find you need to find a balance, right? Because those kind those two things, they uh kind of go out of each other. Like you need to be able to constantly understand what you think your opponent is gonna do. Um and base your plans off of that, if that makes sense. Which is a really difficult thing to do. It it's is, really yeah. hard. And that's why chess is such a difficult game. Um, and that just kind of comes with practice. But I think just coming up with plans yourself and then uh, trying to look at the whole position and trying to come up with plans for your opponent as well and kind of figuring out that this is a two-player game and not just like a one-player game. I think you come a very long way with that. That's, that's good advice. And uh, speaking of advice, I need a lot, right? So as a beginner, <laughs> and I'm sure there's a lot of beginners out there, like to define myself, I'm assuming this would be a definition of a beginner in chess, but I know like what all the pieces do. I know like the wind conditions and stuff like that, but I do not know strategy, right? Uh, I know the names of a few, you know, but that's about it. Uh, so what should I be focused on? I know, again, you have actually videos on this kind of stuff as well that I will link as resources to my viewers, but what should we be focused on? Should I be starting, uh, you know, opening plays, you know, or should I just be working on my awareness and getting repetitions in? Should I be spending a lot of time analyzing my matches versus just playing more and more? What would you recommend? I think the most important thing for you is just going to be to um, one work on tactics. And I, that's kind of what I, what, what I would recommend you the most, just to work on tactics and just working on not blundering pieces because that's like the number one thing that I think is gonna uh, make you win or lose your games. Just, just blundering pieces. I think openings don't really matter at your level at all. I think it's just kind of getting like peace awareness um, and just, just tactics basically. And then also obviously like looking at your own games and seeing, okay, this is where I went wrong. Maybe I should think about this instead. So I think that's what we should work on uh, before the before the event. Perfect. I will work on that. Do you think so? In terms of uh, post mortem after a match, should I be like on chess.com, they have this really cool, like, I don't even know what the official name is, but like a trainer, but they review every one of your plays and they tell you about all your blunders. If you're me, it's just like, oh my God, every move I made was a mistake. Awesome. Uh, so, but the, <laughs> the truth is, is actually it helps with your visibility in terms of seeing things. Okay. I need to start seeing this move. I need to start seeing this with my bishop or whatever it may be, you know? Uh, so should you be reviewing all of your matches, like every play, like as a, uh, you know, as a habit? I think it's good, but I think it's also really important to not get caught up on when uh, that chess.com bot is telling you that you did like 
mistakes <laughs> because okay. at your level what really is going to be uh the cause of loss is going to be the huge blunders like the huge spikes so i think just looking at the big spikes in the graph um and seeing what happened during those spikes that's the only thing that matters because if you just look at every single mistake you're just going to get sad and feel like you're a bad chess player which you shouldn't <laughs> you shouldn't <laughs> okay thank you for the confidence boost i appreciate it uh in terms of <laughs> the two things that i hear more than anything watching a bunch of beginner content out there are number one is control controlling the center of the board. And number two is, is developing your pieces, right? So uh, can you speak a little bit to, to, to the importance of kind of both of those principles in chess? Yeah, I think that both are super important um, because I mean, you, you need, you need to develop, right? Chess is a game where to win, you need to be able to use all your pieces. And that's why developing is so important. You need to get your pieces out early on. And a lot of people, a lot of beginners as well, they just want to checkmate very quickly. And that's why, for instance, the scholars mate, which is when you try to checkmate in three moves um, or four moves, I can't remember, but that's why that is so popular. But that kind of goes against like chess principles. So I think that you, instead of focusing on just trying to do a quick checkmate uh, that looks really cool, you should just focus on like just, just, just playing solid chess, and I think that's uh, going to work out really well. Sounds good. Do you think that we can try one scholar's mate though when we're teammates in the in the chess.com? Can you help me? Is it do you think we can pull it off or is it hard? For it. <laughs> I don't know. There's a lot of other content creators that probably don't play chess out there. So we'll see. Uh in the clash side of things. Of no, course. I'm gonna inspire you now to do the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> we're giving our whole game plan up, Anna. Crap. Uh okay. So my my final question for you is we're taught to think also like many moves ahead in, in chess. That is uh obviously can be challenging right to, to think many moves ahead any uh, tips on how to kind of get better at, at that at, at like i guess board visibility and whatnot yeah so that's like really difficult um but i think just constantly playing chess and just calculating in your brain like being like okay if i go here my opponent can do this and then i will go here and just trying to see that in your head without doing too many arrows and stuff that's the best way of practicing it but you're not going to be able to come into chess and be able to see like 10 moves in a row that's something that comes with practice but if you practice okay. you'll be able to do it so your brand new player ranked like 200 uh, or 250 or something like somebody i know on uh, on chess.com right and uh what should i should I just try to learn one opening like tactic, one one opening like strategy and just keep doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it until I feel comfortable with it? Uh, would you recommend that? And if so, any recommendations on wh what, what I should move, learn, what are the easiest to learn? I'm going to get a lot of hate for this, but I think that the London is a fantastic beginner opening uh, just because of how simple it is. And I think I can teach it to you and you can do it every game with white pretty much. And you're going to feel comfortable and you're not going to blunder any pieces the first like 10 moves. So I think that that is a great opening. You know what? Let's practice the London, Anna. Are you ready? <laughs> I'm ready. All right, let's, let's do, do it. this. Let's do this. All right, guys, so going into our match here. We're going to play against the computer because we don't want to, you know, be unethical and get coaching from a uh, from a master here at 250 ranking uh, rating. Uh, but I want to give a shout out to the Chess Clash. Uh, that's going to happen on September 7th at 2 p.m. Eastern. You can see, uh, obviously, Anna and I doing our best to go through Clash Royale, Clash of Clans, and chess together as a dynamic duo. Uh, all right. And also I should say on chess.com right now, I didn't even, this is not a paid sponsorship, but you can play against like Goblin, against Valkyrie, Hog Rider. So my viewers, the P.E.K.K.A., my viewers will be very familiar with these characters, but I actually want to see the real pieces here. So we're not going to do that. We're going to play with a normal board. So here we go. Uh, I get to choose that. Oh yeah. I can choose to play as white. Perfect. So obviously this is only good. This opening is only good. Or this tactic is, is it called a tactic? Is that what it's <laughs> I'm, I'm getting all my vernacular wrong. An opening. It's an opening. It opening? Um, right. Yeah. The but London. maybe, maybe we should go for a different one. Cause this one is a little bit difficult. It's a 1600 box. Oh, should... <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Good call. Good I think call. we're not at that level yet. <laughs> I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Uh, Coach that's Danny. Good. How about Danny here? Coach right. Danny sounds perfect. I think okay. that's good. He's a 400, more my style. This only works with white, so obviously I should learn an opening for white and, and black, I imagine. Like one for each. Is that that good? That I, is perfect, but we can start with white at least. Okay, I heard there's something called the Evans Gambit, and my last name is Evans, so I'm kind of partial to that strategy based on nothing. Uh, <laughs> is that a white or a black uh, uh, opening? <laughs> 
the Evans Gambit is with white, but okay. I I want to see. Yeah, it's, no, no, I, I want to stick with little, London. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You want to uh, stick with yeah. the London? Okay, okay. I'll save that for another day for another collab. <laughs> All right, here we go. Okay, Going when you against... get fifteen hundred, you can play the Evans Gambit. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. I don't hold your breath. So, uh, Coach Dandy. So, am I on a timer here? Yeah. Is it always? No, there's okay. no timer. Oh, great, great. I do find it pretty stressful in the ten minute matches, and uh. In terms of like uh, the time, like, yeah, I, I feel, feel like I take way too long making any moves in general. So anyway, I got to work on my pacing a little bit. So walk me through the London. What am I trying to do here? So the first thing you do is that you move up your D pawn two steps. Okay. And the idea of that is just you're moving up one of your central pawns. You're trying to take control of the center. Okay. Now, um, uh, yeah, he's not moving. He's not moving one of his internal pawns. But now the idea of the London is that you move out your bishop, the dark squared bishop yep. that you have. You move it up to f4. Okay. And that is right over there, exactly. And the idea is just that you're gonna be developing all your pieces, but you're never gonna put your pieces um like over the over the fourth rank. So okay. all your pieces are going to be pretty close to yourself, and it's going to be harder to blunder them. So c5, okay. now your pawn is under attack. So yes. you don't really want to um, you, you don't really want to let him take your pawn and you having to take up with your queen. You want to keep pawns in the center. So, so here you this. should move up a pawn. Yeah, you can move up that pawn. That's good. Okay. And then I should and scale now, back. Yep, okay. yep, with, with the pawn, exactly. Yep. All right. So the idea here is, is obviously they're going to do something different every time. So uh, our main goal is just always, is it always the bishop like as soon as possible and then just advancing to the fourth thing? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the idea of the London is, is to get like a little pyramid of pawns. So like you did with your pawn one step and then you bring up the other pawn, this pawn to C3. So just one step, the C pawn. Okay. You just move it up one step. That's okay. it. And then you develop all your other pieces. Okay. And look at how solid this is. Nothing is under attack. Yeah, so why did I only move him one just to not block this bishop? Or Yeah, that's okay. that's one idea. And also just for the sake of uh, the London always being like this, just so that you remember it. So now you move out your knight. Your okay. knight and your bishop, you want to develop them, and then you want to castle and get your so king safe. I'm assuming you always you always uh, go towards the center with the knights, generally speaking? Yeah, you know so much about chess. I thought, you know, more than I thought. <laughs> I, I saw, like, I've watched your videos, so I know, I know what you have in your, your beginner videos is what I know. All right, Go so ahead. now at this point, uh, again, like this is where I would start taking a little bit longer as a player and start looking at every piece and be like, okay, what, what, what should I be doing here? But it seems like, you know, so, so what should I be doing here? Taking this bishop out or pawns or... Bishop, castles, and then your other knight, and then you've developed. But just think about developing. So now you're bishop. You need to castle. Okay. okay. And on the bishop, do I just take him to the fourth, as you mentioned? I prefer taking it to the third because look at how many squares that bishop is controlling. There's no pawn blocking it over there. That's true. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then the next move I want to... So basically I want to castle as soon as possible? Yep, yep. Because okay. then you can't get checkmated it for now <laughs> cool 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 all right so my guys i'm not i'm kind of relying on you anna and i'm not doing much thinking about what he's doing here so uh i feel like i got pretty good board position here right so i continue so at this point you know you said we castled we did the bishops i would do the knight at this point but he's kind of blo being blocked over there so what would i do right now so you want to get the knight out, but okay. like you said, you're being blocked. So like can here? you go anywhere else? There we go. Exactly. Right. Towards the center. Cool, cool, cool. All right. And he's kind of doing some development on his own there as well, but I have quite a bit more ground. So I feel pretty good. So at this point, uh, do I uh, like do this? Yeah, you can do that. That's a great meal. Um, I want to see kind of what you're thinking as well. Okay, so yeah, you yeah. could kind of play and, and okay, we could, cool. you could discuss your moves and we could see so, why you want to do the things you want to do. So the fundamentals of the London opening so far are basically like, give me the fundamental because like at this point it feels like, okay, so I moved a pawn up. I moved my bishop up. I moved my knights up. Like what, what makes this the London, so to speak, you know? 
The London is when you have, uh, when you play d4, you have your bishop on f4, and you have this sort of triangle setting with the pawn. So we can see now that you're missing the e pawn because he took your pawn on d4. But typically, you have this little triangle of a pawn on e3, a pawn on c3, and then the bishop on f4. And the idea is just that you're super solid, your pieces are on great squares. And you can see now you're putting a little bit of pressure on that black pawn, even though you cannot take it right now because he's defending it. But now that you've developed all your minor pieces, it's time for you to get your bigger pieces out because they need to be part of the game too. So first you want to get or your queen or your rook out. So what, what are you thinking? I was thinking, so like I saw a lot of videos that like, and this is where it kind of paralysis by analysis right i'm not sure like a lot of videos were like hey if you can put a a rook over here or keep a rook over here and kind of take this whole file or are they called files is that is that right yeah okay look cool. at you <laughs> take this whole file and by the way should i learn the actual like the actual uh nomenclature if you will of the moves before next thursday or, or is this okay to communicate this way we can communicate this oh, way. Yeah, this is cool. the best way to communicate. All right. So I heard some people say, hey, like an open file and you got the king over there. So like do that. Right. And then you like kind of pin the pawn or whatever. Uh, and then also my like intuition is to get the queen in the battle. Right. So like move her over here or something. So is it either or at this point? Yeah, do you think? either okay, or. Cool. I like All both. Right. We'll do that. All right. All right. So he did that. Uh, so at this point, I guess I would try to get the, the queen in, in the action here. So I think uh, maybe uh, I could either move her over here or over here. I guess yeah. I would move over here. Yeah. Okay. It's not that the center. Good. Okay. And he's doing something weird over there. I don't know. He's, he's, he's closing. <laughs> uh, so at this are you, point, are you realizing <laughs> that it's weird? Like, do you realize that he's playing kind of weird moves? Well, that moving both uh, the rooks in <laughs> like that was I don't know. Maybe that's a move that I don't know about. Like, what do I know? But it seems a little unorthodox based on the players that I've played so far. Uh, all right. So at this point, I think my intuition would be like, okay, where can I attack and start stealing some pieces? But I'm not sure if that's being too aggressive. So at this point, in a normal match, I'd be like sitting here, being like, okay, if I moved here, he would, could get me over there, but then I could get him over here. And then he could get me over here, and I think that would be bad. I, I see this is where I get kind of uh, like not sure exactly where to move. So I'm not going to do that. It seems a little bit too aggressive for my for my taste. I don't I don't know if that's right or wrong. Obviously, can't move the queen that much. Uh, I guess I would. Uh, because now you're you're right yeah. now you're you're entering the middle game and this yeah. is the moment when you need to come up with plans so the whole <laughs> yeah. thing of just developing it's like now it's over now you yeah. need to think and come up with plans so one way of thinking about coming up with plans is looking at your opponent's weaknesses so what pieces are not really that well defended for instance that pawn that you have right now under your mouse uh the one on d6 that pawn is pretty weak because it's not defended by any other pawn it's just defended by two pieces you're attacking it by two pieces can you attack it one more time and then it's going to be three versus two okay okay so if i moved maybe i would have to get the the, the bishop out of the way but maybe if i moved like a, a rook over here it could like yeah. have more control over there that okay. is one good move you're and now all of your pieces are so active you see that yes and he just did a thing uh, so now obviously you need to take care of the threat, right? Uh, I think, yeah. <laughs> so I don't want to lose my knight. So I could, I don't see an easy way to get rid of that pawn right now. Uh, so I want to move my, my, my knight out of the way. And I think Good. I can't go here because, well, I guess I could go here, right? That's the move. I'm going to, I'm well, going to do it. Then, oh, well, no, cause wait, he can wait, get wait, me over wait, there. Wait. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. okay. Good. Good. Yeah. All right. Catch all right, yourself. All right. Yeah. So I need to move him somewhere. So I guess if I moved him over here, I think I'd be safer. No, I wouldn't. Yeah. Yeah, I would. Yeah. Cause then I could catch, yeah, yeah, capture him over there and blah, blah, blah. Do you see also one thing? Uh, okay. Wait, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm going to let you, I'm going to let you do this oh, now. No. But what oh, I was going to no. say is <laughs> yeah. that. Did you see that when the pawn pushed, your bishop now got activated because of the move that he did? Your bishop, the black squared bishop, do you see what it was pointing at? This bishop, yeah? Do you see yeah. what it was pointing at? What it was pointing at? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, There's a little bit uh, of visual visualization. No. 
<laughs> what is he pointing? I mean, like, you mean the, the rook way over here? Yeah, did you see okay. that the rook started to be hanging whenever he moved the pawn? It was good that oh. you moved the knight, but it's a good thing to have in your mind. Okay, now that rook is almost hanging. So that's one thing to keep in mind as well. Okay, okay. So I don't feel like I can really move the knight any... Well, yeah, I guess I could capture the, uh, the knight with the knight. That seems like an okay move. I don't see any... Right? Yeah, that's fantastic. Okay. And what are All you right. doing then? Do you know well, the terminology? Uh, I was, uh, yeah, check, checking. No, I was... Forking, uh, forking. Forking, forking, forking. So forking is what, uh, again? I know pinning. What is forking again? Forking is when you attack two pieces at the same time, two pieces of greater okay. value. So okay. both the queen and the rook are of greater value than the knight, so you're forking them. So now, obviously, I mean, this guy, I mean, my coach Danny is, is worse than me, which is saying a lot here. <laughs> Granted, I am being coached by, by Anna Kramling, so there, there's that. Anyway, so I'm going to make the obvious move there. And I feel like that's cool, whatever. Uh, so now back to kind of the drawing board here. But I got there, the queen, so I feel like it's my match to lose, Anna. It is. And all now, right. and now, yeah. uh, one last thing that I want to give yeah. you as a tip. Yep. Always look at all the checks, captures, and attacks in right a position. Here. So that's a check. That's a check. And that's good that you're looking at it. But yeah, also don't forget to look at the captures. <laughs> <laughs> Crap. And this is, okay, so this, this, this. Right? Be careful because now what's happening now? What's happening now? What's happening now, Ash? What is he threatening? He's, oh, 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 my queen. Yeah, I mean, that's a great, that's a great, I was just showing people what not to do, you know? That was a good, I was giving you an opportunity to shine as my coach, and it's great. Uh, okay. Fantastic. So, my queen, I'm, I'm a very disconcerted now about my poor queen here. So, uh, I could, I could obviously, I don't want to retreat. Is retreating always bad, or no? Is it, is it, like, I can move It's around. fine. Yeah, okay. So Retreating is fine. Now, you should be fine with retreating. For now, I'll do that. And now I'll try to take, okay. Uh, so I could go here, maybe, uh, I could go, uh, there, but I don't really see much that I could do from there. I guess I could now, nah. uh, let's see this, this, I guess at this point I would, uh, maybe, maybe go. Yeah. That's yeah, okay. a good move. Okay. That's a great move. You're exploding the center so that you get some more open files for or diagonals for your pieces. Cool, cool, cool. All right. So wh at, at what point should I or ever be cognizant or thinking of like my, my side pawns here? Like these guys. I don't really... Th I think that the only time should be whenever you're scared of getting back ranked, which is when, uh, yeah, when you when you get checkmated uh, because your king cannot like move up. So moving your H pawn one step can always be good, just so that you make sure that your king is always safe. So okay. you can move up your H pawn one step. Okay. Uh, do you think that's a better move than, than going over here? What happens if you go over there, Ash? Uh, <laughs> if I if I go over here, then I have a. Well, oh, uh, what am I missing? What happens when I go over there? What am I missing? What am I not seeing? Knights go backwards. Oh, my bad. Didn't even see the knight. See, this is what I mean. That like, <laughs> I feel like as a beginner, like so many times I'll just miss stupid, like obvious stuff like that. You know, I guess it just yeah. comes with repetition. All right. So I'll do the pawn move and yeah. you only, you only do like one instead of two. Any yeah, situation? just one. Okay. Keep it safe. Cool. All right. He says he loves playing chess. It's a great, a great way to relax. That's nice tips that he's <laughs> coming through there. All right. No, so he's positive, even though he's I losing. I like that. I like that. I like that. All right. So let's see. Uh, I could come in here and not really do much of anything. I could continue to just advance. Uh, I could. Am I missing anything super obvious? Uh, That's a good move. You're putting the knight in the center. It's a great square for it because it can go to a bunch of places. Look at, look at the control you have. Okay, now it's time to checkmate. Um, okay. How is that king looking? You see, you have your knight, your bishop, your queen. You have so many pieces lined up towards that king. Now you just got to calculate how do you checkmate him. Okay, okay, cool. So, well, we have queen first. So she could go up potentially over here, which would put it in check. And then he could come over here which so i need to figure out how to get to this spot right 
Yeah, but just knowing that at this level, just knowing that you can put that king under so much pressure, I think it's good. So just just get your queen up. That's a great okay, move. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. So he moves that way. Now I could... What more uh, checks do you have? Look uh, at all the checks, captures, and attacks. Cool. So I can move the knight this way. Uh, yeah, you can move the knight that way. And then... Okay, feeling pretty good. Uh, so he can't get the knight. He, uh, I could come in. So before you do Wait, a move, before okay. you do a move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there is oh. right now yeah. an absolutely insane, insane idea. And this is really difficult, but you actually have right now a forced checkmate in two or three. And there's nothing your opponent can do about it. Okay. But you need to know about a new thing, which I don't know if you know about, which are discovery checks, which is moving your knight somewhere um, and therefore checking because you see that your queen is lined up in the same diagonal as the king. So if you move the knight somewhere, the king is going to be in check. So you basically have like a free move right now. The knight can okay. move to any square because it's going to be check. Okay, so, so I can move him over. Uh, eh. Well, if I moved him back over here, then he would just move over here. So I can move him over here. And then, then he he'll just take it. it. Yeah, yeah, he'll just take it. Uh, I can move him over here. And that wouldn't do anything. So where is... I have this guy over here. So where's my... Help, help me out here. What am I missing? So if he moves over here, obviously he can't. He can't move over there right now as long as I don't move the knight. I can... If he, So he has to move this way, right? So when you move the knight, then he can move back, right? So if you move yep. the knight right now, just like you said, then he's going to be able to go back to f8. But can't, this yeah. is really difficult, but I kind of just, for the sake of showing it to you, want to show it. There is something called the smothered mate. Do you know about it? I do not know about the smothered mate. Tell me. <laughs> okay. I want, like I want I to said, smother the mate. Let's do it. <laughs> YouTube comments might be like, Anna, she's showing two difficult things, but this is just too pretty to not do I, it. Okay. We gotta do it. We gotta do it, man. The YouTube comments would be disappointed if we didn't smother the mate right now. True, right. true. Okay. So you did you said the move before at the check, knight f6. Okay, you're doing a double check. You're checking both with the queen and with the knight. You see that? The king is super under attack right now. Yes. Okay. So I do it, and then he has to move here. No, he can also oh, go oh, there. Okay, okay. Okay, and then I and can now, come in here. Ah, uh, right? No, no, no. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. You saw it. <laughs> you're, you're, you're sacrificing the queen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you shocked me with the, you're like, dude, how dumb is he? <laughs> All right, good vote. No, no, that was amazing. Did you, did you see this? Did you see what the checkmate is now? Yes, I see that the... Uh, Uh, no, 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 what, no, 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 no. What? <laughs> I'm so excited about this. Okay, okay. So I come uh, over. Uh... <sighs> so now, if you do not check me in the next move, you're losing because you just lost like a like, lot of material. So you yeah. need to find a check that is a checkmate. Do you see any check that would make the king not be able to go anywhere? Okay, so the king's already trapped. And he can't move to either of these locations. So that's that's yeah. the move. So if we go. So we need to put we need to put him in check and then we win, right? We need to put him in check right now. The next okay. move. Because so, he can't move anywhere. Uh uh. <laughs> uh how do I get into this dude? Uh <laughs> I'm not seeing my uh I'm not seeing the uh, help me out here. Where's the where's the check on the the king? So the only way you can check that king is with your knight because yeah, the king is one. really protected. So okay, so I come over here. All right, that's it. Yeah, and that's a checkmate. Wow, cool. Oh man, that was so cool. But it, like, it also feels pathetic that I didn't see like the obvious stuff, you know, throughout the thing. But no, that was so it much was fun. hard. Yeah, you saw a lot of really good things. I also just realized that I made a mistake. If you just go back with your arrows, like two steps back, I just realized that we didn't have to do the smother checkmate. It was also checkmate. Uh, if you go back one move, 
that was a checkmate on h7 knight h7 I, I missed that the knight could go there so if you just took the knight to the right yep. that would have been a checkmate immediately so we didn't have to go for the smothered but i just thought the smothered oh, was you're so right. pretty you're right yeah but i like the smothered too i'm sure the view the viewers will appreciate <laughs> it that was pretty cool so we trapped him we sacrificed the queen and we went in to where he couldn't do anything this is why chess is so cool because I don't know. Sometimes things seem like obvious in hindsight, but then you do do cool things like this, even against a computer or whatever. Uh, and it just feels cool, you know? It does, right? And you feel kind of uh, like some adrenaline because you're like, wow, yeah. I found this really pretty checkmate. Like, that's amazing. That was great. So what should I do for my homework? I only have a week until our event, actually less than the week. So should I just continue to... I mean, the London felt pretty comfortable. So again, I'm not going to do an entire game, but just like just to practice the very, very basics of the opening. I'm essentially, it doesn't matter what pawn I start with. Yeah, you need to start with the D pawn. Okay, so I'm starting with the D pawn. I go up to, and then I, I always take bishop out next. Yeah, bishop okay. there. And then I always take this little guy over here. Yep, oh, little oh. guy over there. <laughs> okay, and that is basically, that's it. That's the London, essentially. And then I continue to one try more. To... Oh, okay. One more little guy. The other little guy. This little guy? No, just one step. Just one step. Just one step. That's a triangle. You see this? Gotcha. Yep, 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 yep. All right. And this is the London. I've done it. Yep. All right. And then after that, again, we try to continue to move our bishops up like this, something like that. Uh, yep. Would you do this? Yeah. And then just tr take his... Just trade? I would. Okay. Yeah. I always get concerned. And this is one area, I guess, like, I'll, I'll, I'll let you go here. You've been very, very generous with your time. Thank you. But... In terms of this is one area where I kind of struggle a little bit is when I know I'm going to be putting myself in the position to trade pieces, you know, like a bishop for a bishop, potentially. A lot of the times I feel like the computer tells me more often than I do that I should do that. I should put the, myself in the position like that, you know, that they could take it if they wanted to. I guess it's because yeah. I, I still control the center a little bit more at the end of the day because I'd have like a queen here or whatever. Exactly. No, that's why, uh, yeah, that's why that would be good. And here, I think it would be good to maybe just trade so that you don't have to remember about the bishop. It's easy to forget about it, and then all of a sudden you lose it. So I would just trade, get your pieces out, castle, and boom, you got a solid opening. Cool, cool, cool. So then I could do something like, well, I'll pretend, well, whatever. I'm not going to play the entire game again, but I will practice the London opening yeah. and just get more repetition under my belt. And then we'll, uh, we'll go, uh, we'll go, uh, you know, kick some, kick some butt next week. <laughs> We will. We will right. be a great team, I'm sure. Me too. Well, Anna, thank you so much for being, again, so generous of your time. I'll include your Twitch, your YouTube, your social media, everything. You guys can check out Anna and learn from her as well in the show notes below. Thank you, and I'll see you next week. Yeah, see you next week. Good luck.